Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Wednesday. I hope all is well and you're all looking forward to the start of the World Cup. Not long to go now, I think it was four days in fact until the opening game over in Qatar. I will of course be talking about that during my videos as the World Cup goes on, but this is an Arsenal channel, isn't it? So I'll still try and prioritise all things Arsenal. Any news that I get, I will bring it to you here and also all my opinions as usual on anything going on around the football club. And I kind of want to start today video talking about that and that is my opinion on the season so far and I wrote a piece that's gone out on goal it went out yesterday I retweeted it uh, this morning as well so if you head over to my socials you'll find it there talking about Arsenal's season review kind of so far given my uh, mid-season awards shall we say or nearly mid-season awards because we're not quite at the middle part of the season yet but you know what I mean I wanted to spend today talking about a little bit of that on this video getting your opinions in your in the comments below do you agree with me disagree with me let me know what you guys think i'll go through some of them right here i have as i said put it out on my social channels as well the full piece so please do head over and give it a read and let me know in the comments on that on there you can put them down i've seen plenty of people already commenting on, on the bottom of the story giving their views on it also please do add to that but let's start today's video with these mid-season review or a few of them anyway and let's start with best player now this was a difficult one that i went for there's been so many i mean how do you pick your best player when you've had this greatest start to a league season in the club's history it is difficult so many good performers out there Gabriel Jesus yes the goals have dried up but he's been absolutely superb and been such a huge factor in Arsenal's uh, start to the season William Saliba monstrous performance after monstrous performance from him um, so far this season Thomas Partey has been fantastic in the last six weeks or so really at very very top level now Thomas Partey looks really really fit and is bringing so much to this Arsenal team Gabriel Martinelli's been electric since the start of the season there's just so many to choose from but having said all that my player of the season so far for Arsenal has to be Granit Xhaka consistency levels off the charts chipping in with goals assists just bringing so much to the team and I think for me, he has been the star of the season so far for Arsenal. So that one goes to Granit Xhaka. Best performance of the season. Again, there's been plenty of them. I think back to Brentford away, the 3-0, just total domination in a very tricky away game, scoring goals. Really good performance that. Been so many good attacking performances throughout the season, especially at the Emirates. But my performance of the season so far it has to be the win at Chelsea. Not just because it's a win at Stamford Bridge. Arsenal have won there three times in a row in the league. So it's not that difficult <laughs> for the, uh, this current Arsenal setup. But it was the manner of performance from the very first whistle right to the end. Pure and total domination against a top six side away from home. Arsenal struggled. We know that against those sort of teams uh, for just years now. But they went there to Stamford Bridge and they played Chelsea off the park. They should have beaten them by more. It was just a really excellent performance. I mean, Chelsea didn't even have a sniff. So that had to be the performance of the season and the result of the season so far. Now, best goal, again, there's been so many great team goals this season for Arsenal. I think back to goals like Gabriel Jesus' header at Brentford. You know, such a brilliant team goal. Vieira's goal at Brentford was fantastic. So many of them. Um, Thomas Partey's goal against Tottenham. I mean, wow brilliant finish but I've gone for Thomas Partey's goal in the win against Nottingham Forest I absolutely love that goal especially the angle the replay of it from behind Partey and you see there's two players he has to bend it around and he does it right into the top corner it was just a fabulous goal I mean all the goals in that game against uh, Nottingham Forest were brilliant all five of them um, but uh, that one got got it for me that was my goal of the season so far Thomas Partey versus um, Nottingham Forest Best new signing. I mean, this one's relatively easy. Um, I mean, William Saliba feels like a new signing, obviously, but he hasn't been. Uh, he's been at the club a long time, so he can. I couldn't put him in this one. Um, Zinchenko has been great when he's played, but I mean, Gabriel Jesus has just transformed this Arsenal team. Transformed the way they played. Um, scored goals, although they've dried up obviously recently in the last sort of six weeks or so, which has been a bit of a frustration. But his performances have still been absolutely exceptional. Um, and you think back, like I talked about that Chelsea win, uh, and he didn't score in that game, but he it was his work that robbed the ball from Thiago Silva that led to the free uh, led to the corner that the goal came from, and it was just that sort of epitomised everything that Gabriel Jesus has been about, just the non-stop work ethic. Um, so Gabriel Jesus for me is Arsenal's 
best new sign-in. Biggest disappointment. I gave this one to the Southampton game. It's really hard to pick a disappointment because um, they've been so, so good this season. They only dropped points in two Premier League games. United game was annoying because they played well and they got caught on, caught on the counter-attack. That was frustrating. But I thought Southampton, that was a disappointing performance. Arsenal took the lead. We're in total dominant position. Should have added another goal for our time. Didn't. And then they just fell away in the second half. And it was a real disappointment leaving St Mary's because it felt like that was a real two points drop. There's been a few maybe performances or players who haven't quite lived up to the billing. Fabio Vieira recently has been a little bit disappointing. But I think we've seen enough from Vieira, certainly at the start and that little little cameo against Wolves as well um, to you know suggest that there's nothing really to worry about Vieira. He's just finding his feet at Arsenal. So his biggest disappointment for me was that Southampton game surprise package now I've gone for Martin Odegaard with this one and I'm sure plenty of you might be a little bit surprised at that choice um but I'm not I haven't picked him as my surprise package because of his performances or anything like that because look we all know Martin Odegaard's a fantastic footballer he's seen that since he's first arrived at Arsenal on loan and then since he arrived permanently last season but my the fact he's Arsenal's top goal scorer at the moment and that is the biggest surprise package for me that Martin Odegaard a player who we've all said needs to add more goals to his game he's got everything else but he needs to score more goals he needs to um, pop up in the final third and take and you know take advantage of the position he gets himself in and he's done that he's Arsenal's top goal scorer I don't think anyone at the start of the season would have predicted that right now Odegaard would be above Saka Martinelli Jesus as Arsenal's top scorer so I think he has to go down as a surprise package for me um, could do better. I've gone with Bukayo Saka, which is weird because you look at his numbers this season, they're absolutely fantastic. You know, they stack up as what you want. He scored four, got six assists in 14 Premier League starts. He scored in the Europa League as well. But you still feel that we haven't quite seen Bukayo Saka at his best yet this season. Um, that, that there's more to come from him. And in a way, that's great because even if he's not he's not playing at his very top level and he's still producing numbers the way he has, I mean, that's really hugely encouraging. But I still feel after the World Cup break, when he comes back the second half of the season, if he can stay fit and if he's not totally burnt out, which could be because he plays so much football, that there's still more to come from Saka. So um, I gave him as my... Uh, uh, as my sort of possibly could do better and finally the sort of cause for concern I think you probably share this one with me is still the squad size and you know Arsenal have done very well at the moment at keeping players fit and that's credit to everyone the way that has been rotating things the workload he's how he's been sharing the workload of players with what the medical staff are doing behind the scenes you know the, the not had too many injuries which is impressive especially when you compare it to other teams in and around them in the Premier League who are also in European competition but you just look at that squad and it's just still the little cause for the concern that when he has made changes for the Europa League for the Carabao Cup against Brighton Arsenal has struggled they lost to Brighton they lost to PSV convincingly um, away from home and that is still the concern maybe some of these fringe players you have Sambi Lacongas you have Fabio Vieira you have Marquinhos um, they just haven't quite been able to um, step into the more established Premier League players' shoes when they've been asked to be. And over the course of the season, in the second half when the games and the fixture list becomes even more crowded, that is a little bit maybe of a cause for concern for what we've seen for Arsenal. And that is why, as I've said in previously, that I really think this is the January to really go for it and get a few more players in and take advantage of the position you're in. So those are some of the mid-season awards that I've given out in the piece that I've done for goal. There are more in there, so please do head over and read it. Like I said, I've put it out on my social channels yesterday. I also retweeted it today, so you'll find it on there uh, on my Twitter if you go and have a look. It's on my Facebook as well. But let me know what you guys think. Anything that you've seen there that I've talked about, that you've agreed with, disagreed with, that you've got other opinions on, let me know, as always, in the comments below. Okay, so quickly, um, I spoke about Mikhailo Modric yesterday, Shakhtar Donetsk, um, and his kind of interview he did with Zinchenko's wife. Um, the Shakhtar director of football, Darius Serna, has been speaking. Now, he spoke to The Athletic about Modric and the interest in him, um, and there is plenty of it. He talked you know, about Arsenal, Newcastle, PSG, Manchester City, clubs like that, um, in for Modric, who's a very you know clearly talented player so you know that the best clubs in Europe are going to be looking at him um but he's put a bit of a price tag on Modric and I think these are really interesting uh comments and for me it's, I think I just can't imagine Arsenal would go anywhere near this sort of price tag you never know I couldn't rule it out who knows what Edu and the Cronkies are thinking but um 
this is what Darius Anna had to say. He said, if someone wants to buy Modric, they must pay huge, huge money. Otherwise, the president of the club will not sell him. All the clubs must respect the president, respect Shakhtar, and in the end, they must respect Modric, who is one of the best players. The price is so big. The market is deciding the price, not me. Anthony Grealish, these are players of more than 100 million euros. And for me, Modric does not have less quality than them. This is the last two transfers in the past year in more or less the same position. Sancho from Borussia Dortmund, we just want respect. The market is deciding the price, not me. It shows which kind of players cost this kind of money. Big, big talk there. You know, looking at those transfer fees, your Antonis, your, I mean, you're basically putting a 100 million euro price tag on Modric there, about an 85 million pound price tag on it. And you don't, I don't blame them. I mean, you look at what some of the other clubs are uh, have been playing for players and it's massively inflating the market i mean anthony good player has done all right since he's got a man united but he's just never a 100 million euro player not in a million years the same probably for jack grealish although i think jack grealish is a fantastic player it was a bit different because he had a buyout clause and so man city decided to pay it it wasn't necessarily they thought that was what he's worth they just decided to pay the buyout clause to get it so maybe that was a bit different but then you look at the sancho fee as well like he mentioned there and um the market that is the market at the moment for for these type of players. That's what these clubs are paying. And for Arsenal, I just think it's very... You just can't imagine them paying that money. I mean, Nicolas Pepe still the record transfer fee, 72 million. We know how that worked out. Um, would Arsenal go to that sort of money for, for Madrid? I mean, you, you've got to say, you, I'd be very, very surprised. But, you know, again, that's just opinion. Who, who knows? Like I said, what the Cronkies are thinking back in America. They might be looking at the league table and thinking, yeah, hell, let's go for it. But... I don't know. When you're talking that sort of money for players, you're looking at the state state run clubs, really, aren't you? For uh, for spending, but who knows? Again, that's just that's just opinion. So we'll wait and see. But that is uh, the latest when it comes to Mudrik's possible um, uh, move, and Shakhtar have certainly set in a very very high value on their star man. Uh, briefly before I go, um, like I said, Arsenal players at the moment are on holiday. They will be going back to London Colney next week before heading off to Dubai for the Dubai Super Cup and the warm weather training camp they will have over there. Santi Cazorla is a player who knows all about that sort of region and certainly the Qatar and the World Cup. He's been playing his football recently, an absolute Arsenal hero, Santi Cazorla, uh, one of my favourite players of the Emirates era. He's been speaking, he gave a really good interview to Dan Matthews over at the Mail um, which is well worth a read. I retweeted it yesterday, so please do head over and read Dan's interview with Santi. Uh, really good piece. He said it, he talked about it about Arsenal, and um, you know he said before about how he wanted to have one more game at Arsenal, play one more time, and it was a real sort of regret of his the way he left and wasn't able to have a big goodbye. He kind of talked about it again in this interview. He said my dream was to play one more or uh, one more. No, my dream was to play more and more years of Arsenal. Of course, I would love to go back. I have to wait to see if the club thinks about me, if I can help in some way as a coach and sports sporting director. He talks about his relationship with Arteta, how he's one of his best friends in football, how Arteta helped him when Cazorla first joined the club. You know, Mikel has spoken many times about Cazorla and the relationship that they have. And it'll be intriguing to see what Santi does when he hangs up his boots. He's still obviously playing. He's 38 years old now. Still mercurial when you see some of the videos of what he's been doing since he went over to Qatar. Um, I think we'd all love Santi to come back and be part of the coaching staff. I mean, he talks about sporting director there. I don't think that's going to happen at Arsenal because, well, Edu's in place. And um, you would think Edu's probably going to stay for a, uh, for a while and see this project out. And Santi hasn't ever done anything like that before. So I can't imagine he'd walk straight into a sporting director job at Arsenal. But coaching staff wise, I mean, who knows? The relationship with Arteta is there. And, you know, how great would that be to see Santi come back and be part of the. Um, coaching staff so nice to hear him there he talked about Arsenal as well he talked about how he said they're doing very well they're very good young players Saka Martin Eli Odegaard we have an amazing future it's normal that they needed time um, because after Wenger went it was a little bit difficult but I think Mikel is the best option for Arsenal he knows the club he uh, loves the club and he knows the mentality it was a really good interview so please do head over like I said I retweeted it on my Twitter yesterday so find it on there Dan Matthews exclusive interview of Sandy Cazorla over in Qatar speaking ahead of the World Cup about his Arsenal regrets and dreams anything like that all right, that's it from me. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. Please do have a very good rest of your day. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.